Hello everyone, this is Mr. Elrod from Atlanta, Georgia, and we're here with another episode of AP Human Geography Review. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the different types of diffusion, something we discussed early in the, early in the year, uh, but something that's incredibly important for really the entire, the entire year in understanding different elements of geography. So first of all, we're just going to talk about what are the different types of diffusion. So we have really two main categories. I like to call the, I like to talk to them in terms of umbrellas. Whenever we have terms that uh, really deal with multiple ideas, I like to talk to them in terms of umbrellas. So we have un relocation diffusion, um, which doesn't have any anything that goes with it. It's just relocation diffusion, and we'll talk about what exactly that means. Uh, and that's a horrible umbrella. I know I'm completely aware, but whatever, we're going to go with it. And then we have the umbrella of expansion diffusion. Looks like I'm going to do another horrible umbrella, Ella, Ella. But anyway, uh, so we have our two umbrella categories of expansion and relocation diffusion. As a part of expansion diffusion, we have stimulus, contagious, and hierarchical diffusion. So let's go through these and talk about each one and what are the characteristics of those types of uh, diffusion. So we're talking about relocation diffusion. We're talking about when a characteristic diffuses into a new space based upon the movement of a person. So it really actually requires the human to pick up and move across space and then diffuse that characteristic to the new space. So we have our individual here. They're going to move across a space. So this is a space, a great excellent space. You know this could be a a body of water, it could be a mountain range. You know, you just have a nice mountain range here or a pretty little body of water. You know, whatever it is that you wanted it to be, it doesn't matter. They move across that space and then that person runs into new people and then they begin to diffuse whatever it is that they're diffusing, their religious ideas, uh, their uh, specific characteristics maybe. Um, you know, maybe they he uh, gets a wife or she gets a husband, and they begin having children or whatever, and they begin to diffuse either physical characteristics or maybe cultural characteristics, new types of foods, maybe taking potatoes over the mountain range, tomatoes, you know, whatever it happens to be, maybe a delicious apple pie was being taken to, uh, to, to the northeastern United States since they don't have things that are quite that delicious. But anyway, uh, so relocation diffusion, notice how it requires the person to move across the space, and that is what takes that new attribute to the new location, so it requires that human movement and crossing the landscape, causing the elements to diffuse. When we talk about stimulus diffusion, this is probably one of the most difficult ones to understand because what we're talking about here is when just a part of an idea diffuses, but not the whole idea. There are a couple textbooks that have some good examples. My, probably my favorite comes out of the Cultural Mosaic, and it talks about uh, the diffusion of the idea of domestication of animals. Not all animals can be domesticated. Uh, in every place, but the idea of domestication diffuses throughout Southwest Asia and then up into Central Asia and then also in other parts of Europe. But anyway, uh, so we might illustrate that by we have a circle here. That circle represents whatever the, the idea is, the circle, and then that moves across space. So instead of uh, the circle diffusing, we have a triangle diffuses to the next space, but you notice how it is shaded in also. So the idea of shading has moved on to the new place, um, but instead of it being a circle, we have a triangle. Uh, but again, so it's part of the idea diffuses, but not the whole idea, the entire concept diffuses to uh, the new place. The next is hierarchical diffusion. I always love to talk about Oprah Winfrey here because she essentially is uh, the queen of hierarchical diffusion because pretty much anything she touches turns to gold if you've ever you know, things like her, her book club and things like that. But anyway, so it, it's passed on, the characteristic is passed on by a note of influence or importance. So somebody that has a tremendous amount of influence, Oprah, the Pope, the President, uh, cultural influence could be familiar, whatever it happens to be. But it's, it starts with that person and then it's going to move on down the line to maybe a couple of other people. So here we go, we have the idea diffusing. This is Oprah saying, you will read my book to her viewers and then her viewers say yes Oprah we will read your book and then they tell their friends about it Oprah told me it was an awesome book so we're going to read it and so they begin to tell their friends and their friends and so we have this diffusion along a node of network typically of some type of communication from the most important person to the least important person the person that's furthest away from the loop and again it tends to expand uh, into the population Next type of diffusion we have here, uh, form of expansion diffusion, is our contagious diffusion. Now, 
A lot of times students like to think of this as some sort of illness or something like that, but not always the case. It just simply describes the way in which it diffuses, the, the characteristic diffuses into space. So it, it spreads very rapidly into space. It's indiscriminate of, uh, of gender, of race, of ethnicity. It doesn't matter, it, it, of income, stat, income level, whatever. It just moves across the space very rapidly, and anybody uh, can take part. So a lot of times we tend to... Uh, we tend to think of that in terms of illnesses, but it can be a variety of different things. Really, it's more about the characteristic of speed. So it starts with one person, and in a very short amount of time, it's going to move to several other people, and then it may it may end up dissipating or whatever. But it's something that happens very quickly, indiscriminate, and just moves through the population very quickly, very rapidly. Okay, and then of course it's going to catch on to the population. I typically like to think of a YouTube video that goes viral, uh, you know, something that catches on very quickly. Okay, so now we're going to look at some of our examples of diffusion. See if you can uh, guess from our example statements uh, what type of uh, diffusion it happens to be. Today our theme is going to be cowboy hats. So our uh, our example number one is Mr. Elrod wears a cowboy hat to school one day. The next day, all of his students come to school wearing a cowboy hat also because they think it's so very awesome. Mr. Elrod is such an awesome guy. The following day, everyone in the school is wearing a cowboy hat. So we have here Mr. Elrod. You notice in the bottom right, that's a picture of Mr. Elrod. I know he's, he has a strange resemblance to uh, Clint Eastwood, but he's rough and tumble that kind of way. And then, of course, the students in the school, all the popular kids like Justin Bieber are wearing the cowboy hats also. So what type of diffusion is this? This is going to be contagious diffusion. Now, uh, the reason it's contagious diffusion is because we see it moving very rapidly with the population. It's indiscriminate of, of the population, of who it is. It doesn't matter. Everyone in the school is wearing the cowboy hat. It moves from Mr. Elrod's class to the entire school within a matter of two days. So it's very rapid and indiscriminate of, of the individual. The next one says, Mr. Elrod comes to school wearing a cow one day wearing a cowboy hat. The next day, several people show up wearing cowboy boots, chaps, and bandanas. Okay, so Mr. Elrod's wearing the cowboy hat, and then other people are take on the idea of, wear, of dressing up in Western wear. So Mr. Elrod shows up again, looking rough and mean uh, and awesome in that way. Then we have uh, some of our students begin to show up, maybe just uh, dressing it up just a little bit, like Mr. Gene Autry. So what kind of diffusion would that be? And that's going to be an example of stimulus diffusion. Again, uh, students came in not necessarily wearing the hat, but they were wearing different elements of cowboy western wear. And so that would be a description of stimulus diffusion. Our next example. Mr. Elroy comes to school one day wearing a cowboy hat. He walks across the hall to Mr. Lovelace's class. Mr. Lovelace is actually the teacher who teaches across the hall from me. And he wears his, he wears his awesome cowboy hat into the room. The next day, all of Mr. Lovelace's students are also wearing a cowboy hat. So there's Mr. Elrod again showing up in his awesome cowboy hat. And then we have uh, Mr. Lovelace's students looking uh, shocked and awed by the awesomeness that is Mr. Elrod reigning in all his glory. That would be an example of relocation diffusion because, again, I moved across the hallway. Now, in our other examples, if I had worn the hat to class, my students wore the hat the next day. And then Mr. Lovelace's students saw my students wearing the hat. That would be another type of diffusion, maybe hierarchical, maybe contagious. But anyhow, because of the fact that I walked across the hallway to Mr. Lovelace's class, they, they saw that because of my movement, that would be relocation diffusion. And in our last example, Mr. Elrod comes to school Monday, Monday day apparently, wearing a cowboy hat. The next day, the coolest boy in the class is wearing a cowboy hat. The day after that, three popular girls are wearing a cowboy hat. By Friday, every student in the class is wearing a cowboy hat. Everybody is caught, uh, caught on to the fashion trend. So here I am again. I show up wearing my awesome cowboy hat, looking, looking awesome like Clint Eastwood. Then we have the coolest kid in the class, clearly Justin Timberlake, show up the next day wearing the cowboy hat, and then it takes on from there. So you probably guessed it by now. This is going to be hierarchical diffusion. Moving from Mr. Elrod, clearly the coolest and the raddest in the whole class. Then the cool kids in the class catch on, and then it moves through the, through the rest of the population to the least, least coolest kid in the class. And, you know, we'll leave that up for you to decide. But anyhow, uh, those are the different types of diffusion with some examples. I uh, hope you found that to be helpful. Again, please leave comments, click like, subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know what types of uh, review material you would like to see. And good luck studying for your exam.